Brian Baker is the City of Sterling Heights Finance and Budget Director. He has served with the city since 1991 and has directed the city's financing and debt management initiatives since 2001. He's also worked regionally in a number of capacities, including serving on a municipal revenue task force established by the governor's office to address ongoing problems. In October of last year, Mr. Baker was selected to serve as the Macomb County representative on the Great Lakes Water Authority. The board, which was established through the bankruptcy proceedings for the City of Detroit, consists of only six members, including one representing the state, two representing the City of Detroit, one from Wayne County, one from Oakland County, and one representing all of us here in Macomb County. Taking a look at the work of the Great Lakes Water Authority over the past year, the following program was produced by Shelby Cable. Good morning, I'm Dave Miller. I'm the Director of Public Works for Shelby Township. And I'm pleased to have with me today Sue McCormick, the Director for Detroit Water and Sewerage Department, and Brian Baker, the Macomb County representative to the Great Lakes Water Authority. Today we'd like to bring you some information regarding the transition from the Detroit Water and Sewage Department into the Great Lakes Water Authority. So in doing so, the format today will be, we'll be asking Sue McCormick and Brian some questions, and we'll just be sharing that information along with the residents of Shelby Township. So let's begin if we can. Sue, can you tell me how the Great Lakes Water Authority came to be? Well, actually, I think in Southeast Michigan, the conversations about moving DWSD to an authority have been somewhere between a 30 and 40 year ongoing discussion. Uh, but in more recent times, uh, the Board of Water Commissioners was on record uh, prior to the city's bankruptcy recommending an authority be formed and DWSD moved to an authority. But there was a unique opportunity during the bankruptcy uh, for that conversation to be advanced. Uh, there were some early conversations that faltered and failed. And then Judge Rhodes uh, appointed Judge Cox as mediator and uh, mediation discussions began to occur uh, with the counties and uh, the city of Detroit. And ultimately there was a turning point, I believe where the mayor, uh, Mayor Duggan, uh, uh, made a positive statement forward that any monies that would be used to lease the system would stay within the system for infrastructure improvements. And that turning point in the conversation, I believe brought us to a successful conclusion in the creation of an authority. Very good. Can you give us a general explanation on how DWSD will be going into the authority? What changes might be made? Or Well, actually, I think the transition really began uh, perhaps with the first uh, Great Lakes Water Authority board meeting back in December. There's been a number of volunteers, uh, somewhere between 140 and 160 uh, across the service area that have been working on uh, a variety of issues, uh, taking a look at everything from uh, the operations coordination between the Great Lakes Water Authority and the local DWSD, understanding all of the assets and inventorying the assets that will be leased by Great Lakes Water Authority from the city, plants, big pipes, pumping station, lift stations, all those things that really uh, serve uh, uh, communities outside of the city of Detroit looking at what's going to happen with the employees and which employees might be assigned to each organization, um, looking at the operating protocols uh, in the interface between the two. So there's been a lot of work to date. Uh, that work really helped inform uh, the leases uh, for the system uh, that have been executed. Mm -hmm. Uh, and ultimately now over the course of the next mm, five months, uh, we'll be working through all the remaining detail necessary in order to get us to an effective start date by January 1st. Great. Over the last year or so, we've heard a lot of efficiencies that have been put in place mm -hmm. with the Detroit Water and Sewage Department. How will those efficiencies move into the Great Lakes Water Authority? Well, I would hope that everything that has been done to date would be good leverage points for GLWA. Uh, we started a couple of years ago really looking at a big organizational optimization effort and some of the things that we've been able to accomplish include streamlining and broadbanding the number of job classifications so from 257 to 57 uh, we're working on leaning business processes leveraging technology all of those things I think position GLWA at its start 
uh, to really continue to optimize uh, and gain, uh, gain speed on those efficiency uh, measures. We've uh, transitioned from about 2,178 employees back in early uh, 2012 to 1,322 as wow. of uh, the 1st of July. Uh, there have been significant improvements in the approaches to capital projects, uh, some of which, like the biosolids dryer facility, are going to be coming on shortly, uh, and there's significant savings uh, that will inure from that. Uh, I think the uh, you know, from a variety of fronts, we have an organization that has ungone, under, undergone substantial change and is ready to take the next step forward. Very good. Recently, the Detroit customers have been asked to reassign their contracts to the Great Lakes Water Authority from DWSD. What impact do you think this will have on the customer, the, being the, the retail customer as well as potentially the end customer, the end user? of well, this is, uh, first and foremost, it's a legal contractual issue because the existing contracts uh, exist between the local communities and uh, the City of Detroit. The City of Detroit won't have the assets uh, necessary to provide that service, so we need to move those contracts forward to GLWA. From the customer community standpoint, uh, it doesn't change the service relationship nature. Uh, this is still a wholesale retail uh, relationship. It doesn't change the costs. Uh, at the onset. It does provide this new service through GLWA and with GLWA service moving forward, we certainly expect that there will be a more positive view from the rating agencies, lower cost of capital, uh, lower cost of capital in a business like ours where we rely significantly on capital projects right. and borrowing in order to make a lot of our system improvements, that that will mean uh, the customers of GLWA will enjoy those better credit ratings and uh, lower cost uh, for improving the infrastructure moving forward. Okay. Brian, I'm going to go to you a little bit. Uh, Macomb County was the only county to vote no on the lease. Correct. Can you give us some feedback on that? Yeah. Why that happened? Well, we had a number of concerns, and let me say Sue was not responsible for negotiating the lease. So, you know, we support Sue and all her uh, efficiency efforts. But we had five or six major concerns. First, the cost. Uh, it's $50 million now for a lease payment to the city of Detroit. There's $4.5 million to a, um, a low-income assistance program. Um, there's certainly, through the bankruptcy now, there's $25 million in additional pension costs. Not part of the lease, but part of the pension or bankruptcy process. So uh, it's higher costs. Um, and unfortunately, um, Detroit doesn't have to use all that money for repairs to their system. They can subsidize their rates, which unfortunately they did the first year. What we wanted to do, we, we hope there's going to be some savings. We wanted to tie the lease payment to those savings. Okay. So only pay the lease if the savings <coughs> occurred. Um, that was not approved, however. We also thought that there was um, um, the collections for Detroit should be, they should be paid in full. Um, and Detroit will only be paying the authority what they actually collect from their residents. Shelby Township pays the full bill regardless of how much their residents use. Um, they pay the full bill and then Shelby tries to collect it from their residents. So we wanted Detroit to be an equal partnership, um, e equal partner in that process. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. We also wanted um, equal governance. With the Cobo deal, each county got one vote. Right now, Detroit gets two votes and, and effectively can block some of the reforms that we're trying to okay. seek. So it wasn't an equal governance structure. Um, and some of the protections that that were are in place we felt weren't strong enough, especially with Detroit being able to block those two votes. So. Okay. Sue, so a question came up, uh, was asked to me earlier. How does, with the transition to the Great Lakes Water Authority, how does that impact the retail customers of the city of Detroit? What does that do for the city? So one of the things that happened when the leases were signed is on that same date, uh, the city of Detroit actually became an agent of GLWA. And so as an agent of GLWA, the city is in the position to continue to bill uh, and collect from its customers, but it's doing so uh, as an assigned agent which means if the city uh, is not effective in 
uh, billing and collecting, then the GLWA has the ability to select another agent. But from every other aspect, uh, the City of Detroit retail customers will continue to get bills from the city. Uh, the department will still be a department of the city. It will integrate with city government. It will be relatively uh, you know, transparent that anything has occurred relative to the City of Detroit customers. So for the most part, what I'm hearing is they'll become just a regular wholesale customer like Sterling Heights or Shelby Township or most other communities? Actually, it's a little bit different. Uh, much of the same sort of contractual relationships exist, uh, but uh, because the city of Detroit, uh, all, the, uh, all of the local collections that the city of Detroit makes, those revenues go directly to GLWA. And so it is different. Okay. Uh, there are some uh, budget oversights that GLWA uh, has in place for monitoring the city of Detroit's uh, retail uh, budget uh, and retail collections, mm -hmm. and that's different for all of the other wholesale customers. So there's a, there's a higher degree of oversight okay. on the city of Detroit re retail system, uh, so it isn't exactly the same as the wholesale relationship with other customers. Great. Uh, as part of the Memorandum of Understanding, it was stated that DWSD slash Great Lakes Water Authority wouldn't raise revenues more than 4%, as we've seen last year and projected for this year. The, the revenue requirements are, are more than 4% of what they were la from the last year. Can you give us a little explanation on how that works? Actually, the revenue requirements didn't go up. Uh, uh, for instance, on the water side, the revenue requirements actually went down a million dollars. So uh, it is a confusing issue. Uh, the language in the MOU is technically very clear. It's the revenue requirement. Our budget won't go up by more than 4% per okay. year. So our need for new funds. What's really been happening is uh, there's been great cost control at DWSD. If you take a look at the budgetary requirements over the course of the last several years, they've come down quite significantly. I think if you compare uh, the budget going back a decade, uh, the actual budgetary requirements are only up about 2.5% from a decade ago, well below the rate of inflation. And the actual performance even better than what's been budgeted. But what we're challenged by is what's going on across the country, uh, not unique to our area, but significant changes in consumer behavior patterns, which means a lot less water is getting purchased, right. and many of our costs are fixed, again associated with the big investment we have in capital infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if your budget stays the same, but your unit of sales go down, then the unit cost goes up. And that's really what our communities experienced last year, is the average unit cost went up, not because the revenues requirement went up, but because the sales went down. What about the uh, loss of Flint as a wholesale customer? How did that impact that? Revenue Flint was about 4% of the system sales, 4% of the system revenue, uh, and so that was, again, a piece of what happened in the adjustment to the unit costs for this current fiscal year that we're in, is that loss of Flint is, is also experienced in those as about a 4%. Okay, one of the concerns that was brought to me also was the lack of payments from Highland Park. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you comment on that? I can. Uh, so DWSD has been very vigorous in pursuing Highland Park, and we actually have received about a $20 million judgment. That judgment has been levied on the Highland Park tax rolls. Now, Highland Park has appealed that judgment, and so its it, uh, collections on that uh, levy are delayed. Uh, there is also a, uh, a facilitated discussion going on between Highland Park uh, and DWSD with regards to is there a way to assure collections moving forward and resolve uh, uh, this situation. Uh, in recent times, Highland Park has uh, just retained Wade Trim. Wade Trim is going to be assisting them in uh, appropriately billing and timely collecting from their customers, which will hopefully help us resolve a, uh, an issue going forward. In the meantime, we continue to work with Highland Park. We want them to be successful as a local system because that will certainly help them meet their obligation to the regional system. Okay. I'm going sure. to address that briefly. Highland Park was one of our issues as well with the no vote. Um, the city of uh, city of Detroit, DWSD, stepped in. The state asked them when Highland Park system failed. Uh, the state asked DWSD to come in and provide water to Highland Park. We thought at this time, as a package deal, the state should come in and help settle that matter. 
prior to the lease being okay. being um, approved. Right now, it's the suburbs that are paying that $25 million that Highland Park owes. So we thought, because this really was a negotiated settlement with the governor's office and the bankruptcy court, that that issue be resolved prior to this, and unfortunately, it wasn't. Okay. Uh, so the part of the memorandum of understanding, and I believe the lease, was a assistance program that's offered to the residents. Can you help me out on that a little bit? Sure. Uh, a half percent of the overall system revenues are being set aside as a part of this agreement to be used for assistance to retail customers anywhere within the GLWA service area. So customers in Shelby Township uh, who have income and affordability issues, having difficulty paying their water bills, have an ability to apply and receive funds from the RAP, uh, okay. similar to any other retail customer uh, throughout the service area. Uh, the expectation is that in short order we'll be out with a request for proposals for an independent third party to administer the program and it will be that independent third party to whom customers would be directed and that independent third party would do income qualifications, determine assistance levels, and then help those customers pay their bills locally within their local community. Okay, so just to reiterate, that's available to all retail customers within the system? Yes. Okay. okay. It will be. I mean, un unfortunately, the vast majority of the low-income um, rate payers are in the city of Detroit, Highland Park, things mm -hmm. like that. So uh, the vast majority of that money will go to them, you know, probably rightly so. We're all paying into the system, but it is a common feature in most water systems that there is some amount of money set aside for low-income sure. people. Sure, sure. Sue, can you, we want to close this up a little bit. Can you give me your long-term vision of the Great Lakes Water Authority? Sure. You know, this is a very exciting time. Again, I think the region has looked forward to this for a variety of reasons for so many decades. Uh, but uh, for me, this is really about taking the current relationship that exists between communities and DWSD, which has been one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, each community has looked for DWSD as its service provider to address whatever local concerns there are. Now we have customers are really becoming owners of the system, if you will. And uh, there, I think there's a big opportunity for not only this independent board to leverage better business operations and help move us further faster as an organization, but for communities to come together and look at finding regional solutions uh, to some of the issues that we've been looking for a single entity to solve uh, for, uh, for ourselves. Uh, I think, uh, you know, economically this will be a good thing for the region. Uh, we've begun to build many partnerships in working with local governments. Mm -hmm. uh, DWSD, I think, worked very effectively with Shelby Township in the, in the recent project that we did on 24 Mile Road, Maine. I think that's an example of the type of collaboration that we will have sure. uh, between a regional service provider and the communities that we serve. Very good. Brian, your vision. Well, um, you know, even though we didn't approve the lease, um, Macomb County is still a member of the authority. Um, we know going forward there's still going to be substantial rate increases coming mm -hmm. our way. Genesee County is leaving. Um, we've got to pay for this lease payment. So my vision is to make sure that the continued savings, the efficiency savings that Sue and her team have done continue. It's got to be right now about saving money to get these rates lowered. We know, you know, 10% rate increases are coming forward for the next couple years. That was in the plant we're in sure. forecast. So that's unacceptable. We've got to further optimize. We've got to decrease our debt. We, we've got some, you know, we've got to continue with the Board of Water Commissioners. Their goal was to uh, reduce the debt level. Mm -hmm. I think we're up to about six billion right now. We want to make sure that the pension payments that we're making only go to cover our liabilities, not the city of Detroit's liabilities. That uh, agreement still has to be uh, accomplished. So. I also want to make sure that the protections that are in place um, are followed through on and so that all are being treated, treated fairly. Detroit's got the two votes that they can block, but I want to make sure that Detroit's ratepayers are paying the, sim, you know, the same rate methodology that all the suburbs sure. are doing. So there, there's a lot that we have to do. There's greater transparency. We've got to have a fair purchasing and procurement. And we've got to gain customers, if, if at all possible. That's the only way to help spread these costs out to, to lower the rates for everyone. So 
we've got a lot more work to, uh, to do. Um, but at this point, I think it's got to be focused on, on the ratepayers for every, you know, all ratepayers. Very good. Thank you both for joining me this, this morning. And I guess if there's any other further questions, they can call me at my office, 586-731-5990. And I will pass whatever questions need to on to Sue or Brian. All right. Thank Again, you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks so much for having us. Thank you.